Now it's time to talk about the resultant force. Now some people call it resultant force, some other people call it the net force. It all means the same thing here. So resultant or net force. So what we do here, if we're considering this, what we have to do is we have to add up. So in the last example I was showing you free body diagrams and we had different forces. Well if we add up all the force vectors. Okay, we have to do what's called vector addition, so we have to add them up in the direction that they are. We add up all the force vectors that are, let's say, acting on the object. So then we take a look at what we get. So if the uh, resultant force, remember, or what we can call the net force, um, equals zero, then we can say then it isn't accelerating. This is going to be the key thing here. Now it could still be moving, but it's just not going to be accelerating. So if the resultant force then is not zero, then it is accelerating. That's not exactly brain busting. I mean, this is just the opposite of the first thing. So, and it is accelerating. Here, it was not. So, what I mean by the resultant force here, what I mean by that is that, well, if the resultant force is zero, that means that, you know, the forces all cancel out. So an example could be something like, um, it doesn't matter what the object is, but let's just say it goes up and it goes down and there's a left and there's a right. Well, if these all cancel out, the net, the net result is zero. But what if here, maybe I just have a forward force and then I have a tiny little backwards force. Turns out then they're not balancing each other out. They don't cancel out in that case. If they don't cancel out, then there will be a net force, or we could say there is a resultant force and see it's not equal to zero. So if that's the case, then away I go, then I can actually figure this out. So again, the key is to take a look at these different forces and add them all up, and we can then figure out what happens. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm gonna give you an example. So here we have, well, three angry dogs. Um, I just thought of this because I saw some dogs the other day that were really barking at me. Uh, I'm sure they're nice dogs. They're maybe just uh, protecting their master, but in any case, uh, that's a bit mean to say master, but their person. In any case, there were some dogs, and they were really barking at me, and I'm sure they were just, you know, defending their territory, saying, you know, go away, or something like that. But then I was just thinking, oh, okay, can you imagine angry dogs, and they're pulling on you? They're not necessarily trying to hurt you. Uh, I don't want to, you know, advocate any sort of uh, problems with dogs. Some dogs are very nice, of course, but let's take a look at this anyway. So if we have three angry dogs and they're pulling on you, and we have the one force is going, you know, a force of two newtons and it's going to the right. Another force, another dog is giving you a force of five newtons to the left. And then we have a third dog, it's giving a force of two newtons straight up. So if that's the case, then we might say, what's the resultant force? In other words, what's the net force? So let's take a look what happens to you. So uh, let's just say this is me. So if this is me right here, standing there like this. Maybe I'm not so happy because the dogs aren't very happy with me. And so I need to draw a free body diagram in order to deal with this. So let's draw the first force. We're going to assume all the forces are emanating from my center of mass. Let's assume it's right here where my arms meet my body here. Uh, this isn't a very uh, accurate stick man, but oh well. I've got really long arms then. Um, so if we look at this, the first force is two newtons to the right. So I'm going to draw it two arbitrary units to the right. And maybe I'll even label it two newtons to the right. Now how long is this really? Well, I don't know. But I've, just, I've drawn it a certain length and I've labeled that two newtons. Now it is important then though that you make things somewhat to scale after that. Which means my second force is five newtons to the left. I can't draw it the same length that I just had. In other words, I can't just stop right here. That's got to be two, so I've got to go kind of more than double that distance. I don't know, maybe like this. So this is five newtons to the left. And then I've got two newtons upwards, so maybe I'll draw that one. So this will be something you know, like this right here, two newtons straight up. And the answer is, what's your resultant force? 
And it turns out these won't cancel out if you take a look at this. So now what I like to do is uh, maybe just deal with the first one. So maybe I'll just deal with the sort of left, the left or right forces first. That's because these two are opposite, or they're, they're acting opposite to each other. This 5 newtons is going to the left, but this 2 newtons is going to the right. And turns out, if they're acting exactly opposite to each other, then I can simply subtract them. So in other words, the 5 newton left and the 2 newton to the right are going to be equivalent to, well, 5 minus 2 is going to be 3. So it's going to be the equivalent to a 3 newton force to the left only. Maybe I should draw that in blue just to be a little bit consistent here, I suppose. I'm going to just try to solve this now. So I've got this force right here. That's 3 newtons to the left. And then second step is going to be to then, uh, well, we could say we could add up the vectors. So when I say add up, you have to add vectors head to tail. So what I mean by that is now I'm going to consider, well, this right here, I can sort of redraw it as only a 3 newton vector to the left and then an upwards one of 2 newtons. That one's still there. So I can maybe draw the first one first. So I can say that's 3 newtons to the left. And then after that, I can add the 2 newtons straight up. And so the result then, it's as if you have to sort of start here, finish here. So it's like we have a little dotted line right here. And that's going to be my F net, or my resultant force. And this right here is going to be my angle. It turns out I can calculate this now. My unknown force right here is going to be, well, I can use Pythagoras' theorem. So because this is a right angle triangle, I know that my sort of F squared, I suppose I should call it F net, so F net squared is going to be equal to, this is Pythagoras' theorem, it goes C squared equals B squared plus A squared. So 2 squared plus 3 squared. Well, that means my F net then is going to be, well, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 9 plus 4 gives me 13. So then I just have to do, well, the square root of 13. So I can say my net force then will be approximately, well, I'll get out my trusty calculator. If it was in a math class, I could leave it as square root of 13, but I'll try to estimate it just for fun here. So it's around 3.6 newtons. So I'll say approximately... 3.6 newtons. The problem is, which way is it pointing? Now you can say it's sort of west and north. I mean, assuming this was sort of west and assuming this was north or something like that. Um, but the problem is, it, it's a little bit difficult to sort of define your angle here. Now we can actually find the angle. Um, now unless this was 3 and 3, then we could say the angle is 45 degrees. If this was 3 newtons left and 3 newtons up, it would be 45 degrees but it's not. So we can use a trick then. If you remember your Sokatoa, in other words, your sine, cosine, and tangent rules, it turns out with this right here, if I have opposite to this angle and I have the adjacent, well, tangent of theta is going to be opposite over adjacent. And that means it's going to be uh, 2 over 3. So I know my tangent of my angle is going to be 2 over 3, therefore my angle is going to be the inverse tangent of 2 over 3. That's how I can solve this. So I'm going to get out my trusty calculator, and I need to make sure I'm in the right mode. You've been doing lots of math stuff in your math classes, and maybe you've been playing around with your mode and putting it in radian mode. So I'm going to make sure to change mine to degree mode. I'm not sure what kind of calculator you have, but if you have a TI-83 or TI-84, you just press mode, and away you go. So I need to do, well, I'll do 2 over 3, I'll press enter, and I want to do the inverse tangent of that answer. Seems like a backwards way to do it, but it'll work. So if I want to the nearest degree, I could say that's around, what could I say, around 34 degrees or so. So I'll say that that angle is 34 degrees. Well, if that angle is approximately 34 degrees, well, then it all depends now on how I feel like defining my angle. I could say then that my net force, or my resultant force, is going to be 3.6 newtons. And then if I assume that this right here is west first, then I could say it's west 34 degrees north. 
That's one way of saying it. If this was the kind of north and west. Um, I could also say north first and then west. So that would actually be north 56 degrees west if I wanted. Or I could maybe use bearings as well. So I can actually consider this right here and say, well, if you know about bearings, you consider this right here being zero degrees and to the right is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees and this is 270. So if I'm going to the left and up, in other words, I'm going like this right here and this angle right here is 34. Well, then I have to do 270 plus 34. So it turns out that would be, I could also say then that's, that's what would that be, 304 degrees. That would be a bearing. There's a lot of different ways of writing this. But the key thing is this, that we have a net force. In other words, we have a resultant force. And if we have a resultant force, that means then that I'm going to be accelerating. So that's something really important, I think, to consider. So we can solve all sorts of questions just by looking at um, balancing out the forces or figuring out what the resultant force is. And in a lot of physics situations, it's really helpful to first just consider your resultant or net force. Now, of course, once you know that net force, you can do a lot with it. Turns out now we can tell something about the acceleration, and then we can see how fast it's going after a certain period of time. We can do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. But the key is to just look at this and be able to figure out the resultant force.